Hey guys, no video for our castles and old buildings in Japan playlist. This is Matsumoto Castle, which is in Matsumoto City in Nagano in central Japan. And the main building that you can see here was built about 420 years ago. It had some restoration done to it about 100 years ago, but basically the building is original. So it's on the National Heritage Register of Japan. Obviously there would have been other buildings as well. Where that big tree is standing, there would have been some sort of guard house or some sort of defensive structure. Most of that wall would have had some sort of defensive structure on it, but over the years that's gone, but the castle's been saved, fortunately. Huge moat with some huge koi swimming around in it as is often the case usually in Japan when you find bodies of water like this whether it be castles or parks or wherever else you might find water like this you'll often find koi swimming around isn't that a beautiful building so this is right up there this one it's not as big as Himeji Castle but it's a spectacular specimen so we've showed you a few castles before this is definitely one of the better ones without a doubt You can see the little windows up there, not the big ones at the bars, the little ones, the little squares and the little rectangles. They are for firing weapons out of. We'll show you the other side of those in a moment. So obviously we've gone around the side now so you can have a better look at that red bridge. Isn't that beautiful? beautiful setting too. Matsumoto City is in the Japanese Alps. It's sort of in a valley between the Alps. So the setting's just beautiful. Every direction you look here on a clear day you can see Alps. Beautiful mountains with snow all over them. Beautiful place. Fresh air. Really beautiful city, Matsumoto. And it's sort of on the way to the ski fields of Japan too, so it's a popular destination for people that are traveling up to the ski fields to pass through here and have a look at the castle and have a look at the city. So here's a better look at those holes. Look, this is a defensive wall here at the main gate. You can see the squares were for firing muskets through and the rectangles were for firing arrows through. We'll see some more of that later too. So interesting when you look at these castles, always interesting to look at it from a a tactical point of view. So if we're actually attacking this castle, you've got to first walk across this bridge while being fired at by with muskets and arrows just to get across the bridge. And then once you do get across that bridge, then you're confronted with this huge door. So while you're still being shot at, you've got to try and find your way through this huge door. So obviously when they're letting big groups of their own people through that open the big doors, when they're just letting one person through, they just open the little door there. Again, tactical, isn't it? Tactical and defensive. So if you only open one little door, you don't, you're not opening yourself up to as much risk, are you, of being attacked by big groups of people? But just imagine from an attacker's point of view, you manage to get through those doors. Now we're on the other side now. Those are the, the, the inside from where those people were shooting at you through those holes so if you've managed to get to here without being killed then you're faced with another defensive wall and another huge door and you've got to attack that while being shot at by the people above you with muskets and arrows <laughs> so it's interesting most big castles like this in Japan were never taken they were so defensively effective that the opposition never never took them on. Most of them, occasionally they did, of course, but most of them like this were never taken. Uh, Himeji, the biggest, most famous castle in Japan, was never even attacked because the other guys must have looked at it and, and said, well, no chance of doing that. <laughs> That's not going to happen. So we finally got through the, those doors and walls and we're on the inside. Of course, there'd be hundreds of guys running around here shooting at you as well and then you're faced with the castle itself everybody's in there shooting at you through every hole and 
window they can find. Isn't that a beautiful scene? Just a little bit of side note too, in places like this where you get heavy falls of snow, quite often the trees, the ornamental trees like this are supported by, it's bamboo and rope basically, and it's just supporting the tree so that if it gets a really heavy layer of, you know, meter of snow over the top of it, that the weight's not going to break the branches off if it's supported by this structure. So it's quite a common scene in the snowier parts of Japan. So we've got to here, and every hole you can see there's got someone firing a musket or an arrow through it at you. <laughs> And of course those big slatted windows, they can do anything they want through those, fire anything they want. Big solid door there with a little door. So you always, with the big doors, a little access door there so that one person can just slip through. So then we've got to the front door now front door of the main building. We've got these huge big wooden doors. And then if you can get through there then you're faced with the first set of stairs. So they're very steep. Castle stairs is, is always very steep and narrow, difficult to, to climb. Makes them easier to defend of course. And again here we are on the inside looking out through the the square hole for the muskets and the rectangular hole for the for the arrows. Those little wires that you can see there sort of spoiling our view are only there just to keep the birds out basically. That's a modern thing they've put there just to keep the birds from coming into the building. But of course with castles no blind spots the way these things are designed there's no really not really anywhere you can approach the building without been seen and fired at from from different points and they all cross each other so they can defend each other and you're actually getting shot at by it from more than one point all the time which is sort of uh, effective isn't it so if you're interested in the muskets these are the sort of muskets that they were firing some they made themselves and some they got from the Spanish and some they got from the Dutch. So here's one of those standard windows. Obviously not wide enough spaces to actually get through so people can't come in through them. But certainly wide enough and high enough that very effective at firing out if you want to fire out at people. Or even if you just want to appreciate the swans. Isn't that beautiful? As you can see, the moat's got shallow over the years. It's sort of filled up with silt and so on, so it's ended up quite shallow now. Isn't that spectacular? Well, these are interesting too, quite common Japanese castles. You raise that board there, you can drop stones down that hole, and they fall out through the bottom there, and you hit people in the head with a rock. <laughs> so someone's cl trying to climb up the wall, as well as being able to shoot at them through the little windows, you can drop rocks on them through those points. Usually on the corner, on the corner of the wall, they have these things. Say one on each side of the corner. Fairly simple, isn't it? Dropping a rock on someone's head. Low tech, low tech weapon. Nice suit of samurai armor, isn't it? This is sort of interesting, quite often to see big calibre muskets and things, and even small cannons, but usually handheld, so it's not really common to see them on wheels like that. Oh, have a look at this wood, see the little circles? Each one of those is a chip, where they've used a hand tool to chip away at the tree to make it into this rectangular shape, to make it into a post. So once you're aware of that, when you're in these old buildings, it's quite amazing to look at the wood and see each little chip that's 
been slowly chipped away at the wood to make it into the shape and sometimes those beams are huge so here's the other once you're inside the the castle of course you've got all these stairwells and what they did was at the top of each set of stairs was a horizontal door so that if you're coming up these really steep narrow stairs to try and get to the next floor you're confronted with a horizontal door above you that you have to try and balance on the stairs there's one and of course they can put weight the people that are in, in on the floor above you can put weight on that even stand on it it's going to stop you you're standing on the stairs below there trying to push that upwards to try and come up and you can't get up and that's every floor all the way to the top so it'd be sort of pointless and of course the lord of the of the castle would be on the top floor of course with his family so he's in the hardest to get at place the most def defensive place this room is right at the top it would have had tatami floor there and it would have been quite civilized with with all sorts of matting and so on but also 360 degree view of of outside and again the firing points and firing windows around the room as well so you could they could defend from up here as well so have a look at this here's the 360 degree view from the top so we'll go from side to side and and give you an idea of the view all the way around that's one side here's the next and you can see they overlap beautiful isn't it of course defensively they can see they can see who's coming for miles around give them lots of time to prepare this is amazing this is probably one of the most interesting parts of the castle there's only two castles in Japan who have one of these rooms and this is a moon viewing room it's called and it's designed in a way that you can see the moon wherever the moon happens to be if the moon's visible in the sky you can see it from inside this room so the idea of course is a tatami floor in there and you'd sit there and eat whatever you're eating and look out the window and appreciate the view of the moon which would be all very nice so it's only two castles in Japan that are known to have one of these because of course most of the time they weren't fighting wars most of the time people living in these castles there was no war going on so they had a lot of time to appreciate the moon and similar things to that so that's why this would have been built and then there was a, a major defensive wall and doors between this beautiful room and the main structure so this room obviously wouldn't be terribly easy to defend but it was just used in time of peace, of course, to sit there and appreciate the moon. Isn't that beautiful? So you can see it there on the left-hand side of the main structure on the, on the first floor. Isn't it amazing? Beautiful, beautiful place. Matsumoto Castle. So if you're in central Japan, up in the Nagano Alps, and you have some spare time, we highly recommend going and enjoying that beautiful place. More videos. Coming soon.